Hey guys, this is Eliza from Dusk Angel Reads, and today I'll be doing my May wrap up. So, in the month of May, I read 21 audiobooks, 4 physical books, and I DNF'd one book. Um, so, I read a fucking lot of audiobooks this month. I'm not exactly sure how it happened. I was just listening to a lot of audiobooks, and I did compete in two readathons this month. So, I used a lot of audiobooks for them because I've kind of been in a physical reading slump. So, a lot of audiobooks this month, and this, uh, this wrap-up is going to take... First, I'll start off with the physical reads. The first book I read was Ace of Shades by Amanda Foody. Now, this one is one of my new all-time favourites. I love Amanda Foody's work. Um, Daughter of the Burning City, her debut was absolutely amazing. And as soon as this book was announced, I pre-ordered it. And then I also requested an e-galley through um, NetGalley, and I received that as well. So, I did have an e uh, for it, but I did read the physical book because it came by the time I got around to reading it. But this book is about this girl whose mother goes missing and she goes to the City of Sin to try and find her. She teams up with one of the lords of one of the gangs in the City of Sin and they go off and try and find her mother. There's a lot of other shit that goes on and it is a, such an amazing book. The main character is so damn good and so Levi, Levi, um, the like second one of the secondary characters kind of like well, you know he is a main character because they do go from his point of view as well but yeah both the main characters are amazing levy i'm gonna i call him levy it could be levi i don't know but levy and n are really awesome characters i can't wait to see more of n because she's just such a badass female character but also has those flaws and has those fears that come through but she overcomes them because she just wants to find her mother and i love this book highly recommend it. The next physical books I read I don't actually own copies of, I read them on ebook and that is the Menagerie series by Tui T. Sutherland and Kari Sutherland. So that one includes the, imagine, uh, the Menagerie, I can't say that word, I always fuck it up, the Menagerie, Dragon on Trial and Krakens and Lies. And this series is just a fun middle grade series that is full of fantasy elements. It is a um, urban fantasy so they are in the real world but there is magic, well there isn't magic, there is I don't think there's magic. They never mentioned magic. Um, there is mythical creatures in this real world. And basically it starts off with this guy wakes up in the morning. He can't figure out why his pets are like freaking out. Like he's got a cat and a mice and a couple other things. And they're like scared and freaking out and hiding in their cages. Until he finds a griffin cub underneath his bed. That was trying to eat them. So yeah. Um, and then he follows the griffin cub back to where it lives. And discovers this menagerie of magical creatures that was a secret and is actually run by the family of one of the people he goes to school with and he never knew about it. And he becomes part of the menagerie and they go off on amazing weird adventures and just basically try and save the menagerie all the time. Because someone's always trying to sabotage something. So those are the four physical books I read. Now we'll move on to the DNF that I did read as it was like a physical book. Um, the book I DNF was A Shot in the Dark by Lynn Truss. This one is an adult murder mystery but I read 16%, I think it was, um, and DNF the book. It was just confusing and boring. So, like, for that first part of the book. The main thing that made it confusing was it was like they were just trying, like, the author was just trying to put in big words to sound intelligent. And hold on, let me, let me look them up. So, while I was reading, after a while I started highlighting the um, words that I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Um, and I got sick of having to Google shit and I just stopped bothering and just went on with it. And I even showed my mum some of these words and she's like, I have never even heard of that before. So I'm just going to share a couple. I'll put them here because I probably can't pronounce them as well as, yeah, I don't know how to pronounce them. Um, but we've got iconoclastic, odious acrimonious and then we've got some scientific term which was never explained and I didn't know what this was but apparently it's the study of the skull or the brain or something I don't know I did look it up but it's friend friendologist like I said I can't pronounce this shit um thespians Austin syllably but yeah, they're the ones I highlighted before I ended up DNFing the book. But it, yeah, it just felt like she was putting in these big words just to make it sound more impressive. Um, and there was also kind of two plots going on. Like there was two groups of characters. 
one of them was following this detective and then his, like, the next one down from whatever he was. And then there was this young guy that came in and they were trying to solve a mystery. But the main detective didn't think there was a mystery because he was hell-bent that there was no crime in his town. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the other one was something about this guy who was, like, a critique guy for a, um, like, musicals or plays and stuff. Like, he wrote reviews in the papers and stuff. I'm not sure what the fuck point of that was. They didn't explain anything. There was just this second plot going on. And I'm still not sure whether that plot was happening at the exact same time as the other one, or whether that was in the past or in the future. I don't know what the fuck was going on. And literally the first chapter of the book felt like I was reading a non-fiction. Like, it read... It was explaining this massacre that happened in the town that this book was set. And at first I'm like, is this real? Like, are they actually explaining an event that happened and like, this is what this book is based off? And I'm not sure if it is, but it could be. I don't know. It was just read, it was written like a non-fiction book. Like it was just information, or like just, you know? And I don't particularly like being bombarded with information with no explanation to it whatsoever. So it was... It was a little confusing, I was over it within 16% and I DNF'd it. And that book left me in a fucking reading slump and I still haven't really gotten out of it. Okay, now onto the audiobooks that I read in, um, what month are we? May. <laughs> the audiobooks that I read in May, like I said, I did read 21 audiobooks, but there was a few that were, um, rereads. So that way I could continue on with the series. So I'll just jump straight into them. The first audiobook that I read was Dragon Keeper by Carol Wilkinson. This one I picked up through my library app. I didn't know what it was about. I'd never heard of it before, but it had like a green dragon on the cover of the audiobook. I was like, that looks interesting. I'm going to read that. And it turned out it was like a middle grade story that was fantasy, middle grade fantasy based. Obviously there was dragon, so I knew it was fantasy. But um, it starts off with this girl who is like living in this castle and she's like a servant type thing to the dragon keeper and the dragon keeper treats the dragons really badly and doesn't really care about them and she escapes with the dragon and they go on a quest to find the ocean and that is basically what it is there's like heap of fun little things it kind of reminded me a little bit like a little bit of um, the wind in the willows how Toad like when he escapes jail and he goes back and tries to like hitchhike with the river people and that, that type of shit. It reminded me of that a little bit when they were escaping. But yeah, it was a really fun, interesting read. I think I read it at like four, four and a half stars. The next books, like this is in no particular order, but the next books I'm going to talk about are the Harry Potter books I read in the month of May. I read three Harry Potter books and they were The Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince and The Deathly Hallows. The Deathly Hallows I actually finished like just before midnight last night. And as you know, I always listen to audiobooks of Harry Potter. I've just got them going at all times. So now that I've finished Deathly Hallows, I'll have to start the series again. And I think I'm on like my 11th or 12th reread or something. I don't know. Some ridiculous amount, but I'm just always reading the Harry Potter books. I know them off by heart. Okay, the next book is The Bronze Key by Cassandra Clare and Holly Black. This is the third book in the um, Magisterium series. I think it's the third book. Um, this one I read as part of a readathon because we were holding a middle grade event and I used that. But, um, well, it wasn't a readathon, it was a reading challenge. But yeah, I listened to that one. I've been slowly making my way through the Mag Magisterium series and they are enjoyable. Like, I, like, they're not as exciting. Like, I wouldn't write them like five stars, but they are enjoyable. And it's a really interesting magical system and a magical world. So, I do enjoy the reading them and the audiobooks are done really well. Next we'll go into the Wayward Children series by Shauna Maguire. I reread Every Heart of Doorway and Down Among the Sticks and Bones on audiobook so that way I could continue on to Beneath the Sugar Sky which I also listen to on audiobook. Um, these ones, I do really enjoy them. They're not like an absolute favourite. I did enjoy this one. I think I rated this one four, four and a half. I'm not 100% sure. This one I only rated four. I didn't enjoy it as much as I did Every Heart of Doorway. And then Beneath the Sugar Sky, I'm pretty sure I rated five stars. I really enjoyed Beneath the Sugar Sky. It was just so fun and interesting. And you got to learn more about the worlds and you did it like venture into more than one world in Beneath the Sugar Sky. So that was really fun. But Every Heart of Doorway, I really enjoyed because of the mystery aspect. I love murder mysteries. And this one turned out to be a murder mystery, even if it's only 200 pages. It was interesting and it was a good murder mystery. And then Down Among the Sticks and Bones follows one of the uh, two of the characters from this book while they were in their magical world, so before they come back to Earth and go into 
Eleanor West's home for wayward children. So that one was enjoyable. And then Beneath the Sugar Sky follows the daughter of one of the characters from Every Heart of Doorway. And like I said, I really, like I said, I really enjoyed the um, Beneath the Sugar Sky a lot more than I did these two. This one was really good. This one didn't love as much, but Beneath the Sugar Sky was really good. And literally two days after I read Beneath the Sugar Sky, they released the cover for the fourth book. I can't remember what it's called, but I am so keen. It looks like so magical and mystical. So I am so keen to continue this series. And I'll probably continue the audiobooks because I did really enjoy the audiobooks. Except for the one for, I think it was Down Among the Sticks and Bones. One of them, Shauna Maguire narrated herself and I didn't like it. Her narration skills are horrible. She can't narrate well, like she can't do different voices well. And that did impact my enjoyment of the book. Well, I'd already read it before, but it impacted my enjoyment of the reread. So yeah, but I did enjoy the narrator for this one and Beneath the Sugar Sky. They, I'm pretty sure they were two different narrators as well, but I did enjoy them a lot as well. They did the audiobook very well. Yes, I said well about five times in that sentence. So next I read another Shauna Maguire book and that was Dusk or Dark or Dawn or Day. I'm always fucked that up. Um, this one I did really enjoy. It was pretty good. Um, there was like a couple aspects that could have been better. Like it could have been a bit longer so that way we got a bit more world building and such. But overall I did really enjoy it. The idea of the world was really interesting. It basically follows this girl who is a ghost and so that they can move on from ghost into like the next part of death. I'm not sure what they called it in the book, but to move on they have to earn time and they've got to earn a certain amount of time before their death day will come and they can move on. And basically this chick, they she uh, volunteers at a suicide hotline and all the minutes that it takes for her to convince someone not to commit suicide they are the time that she gets back to herself so that way she can move on. And also the ghosts can take and give time by touch and if they've earned some time they can give it to someone and she does give it to a couple people like that are struggling throughout the book. She gives them some time and they liven up. Um, and there's also witches in the book and you can like put ghosts in mirrors and then use them as like an like to be immortal like you can drain their time from them and become immortal and that's basically what the book follows it's a really interesting world and i did really enjoy it and i do really enjoy shauna mcguire's writing so it was overall good next i read the lunar chronicles by marissa meyer and this one i have already read well first we've got cinder scarlet cress and winter um, I've already read Cinder in the past. This one I read physically um, a while back now and I basically wanted to continue the series but I had forgotten what happened in Cinder. Like I remembered some bits but I mostly forgot what happened in Cinder and then I saw the audiobooks pop up on my library app for all four books. So I decided to reread the audiobook for Cinder and then continue on with the rest of the series. Um, I highly recommend the audiobooks. The audiobooks are done really well. I don't know who the narrator is but I did I'm like losing this. Um, I did really enjoy the audiobooks. They were very well done and I do love the Lunar Chronicle series now. Like I thought, I didn't think I would like it as much as I did. I didn't love the romance. It was kind of like one of those stories where every character, oh shit, every character has to end up with a romance. Like every character has a partner within the main group of characters. It's kind of the same as Illuminae. All like the six people that are your main characters all end up with one of those six. So it was kind of the same in this, which is not like my most favorite. I'm just gonna put this down. Um, it's not the most favorite thing or most favorite trope in YA books. And especially cause it's romance. I'm not a romance reader and I don't enjoy romance that much, but I did over enjoy, overall, I cannot talk today. I did overall enjoy the story and the plot of Cinder and the rest of the Lunar Chronicles. It's really fun, really action packed and I love the world. It's really unique and really interesting. So I did enjoy the Lunar Chronicles, but I could it could have been better without the romance. Is, like there's a lot, but it yeah, it could have been better without them. But I know a lot of people love the romances, so that's what makes it amazing for them, whereas I'm not that person. So next I want to talk about the Mr. Lemoncello's Library series by Chris Gravenstein. This one, if you just watched my June TBR, you would know that I read the books out of order by accident. 
So I read Escape from Bizella Mancello's library, and then I read Escape from, no, what is it? Mr. Lemoncello's Great Library Race, which is the third book. And then I've started, I'm currently reading Escape from, uh, why do I keep saying Escape? That's only the name of the first book. Uh, Mr. Lemoncello's Library Olympics. So that's the second book I'm currently reading, but I have finished the third book. I won't talk about that much, but it, overall I am really enjoying the series. It's another one that's like a middle grade fun series. It's not fantasy, um, it's just based on extended technology, like technology that we haven't really grasped yet, but is most likely going to be in the future. Um, things like holograms and that type of stuff. So it is really interesting and I like the fact side of it, like there's always little facts being thrown in throughout the library challenges. So that's really interesting, and then there's also a gaming vibe to it, and that's really cool. So yeah, overall I am really enjoying it. I haven't finished um, the second book yet, but I'm getting there. They're not very long, so I should be able to probably finish it today, but it'll be on next month's um, wrap-up. Next we have Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Rash. This one is another audiobook that I reread. This one was the book of the month pick for the YA Book Nerds, the Facebook group I run. So something just fell over in my cupboard. Um, so I had to, well I didn't have to, but I cho chose to reread it just to get a little refresher before I tried to write the discussion questions. And I do really enjoy this series. I'm not a fan of the love triangle. That's because I hate love triangles. I hate romance, well I don't hate romance, but I don't like most romances in books. And there is a love triangle in this one. Um, it kind of comes off pretty quickly what's going to happen for this book anyway. I don't actually remember who she ends up with in the other books, or if she even ends up with either of them. I don't remember, but in this one we have a love triangle that's not ideal, but I do still really enjoy the plot and the world of the Snow Like Ashes book. And this one is basically about this girl who is one of the survivors of her kingdom, Winter. And she and her group are trying to get Winter back from Autumn? I think it's Autumn. Yeah, I think it's Autumn. Um, but the King of Autumn, Angra, he basically came in, destroyed everyone, murdered millions, took a heap of people's slaves, and took Winter for his own. Basically because in Winter there is these mountains which they reckon that if you dig in the right place and deep enough you will find the source of magic and that is what they're trying to find. So it's basically about Mira and their group trying to get back Winter. So I really enjoy it. This book was probably my favourite even without the um, like love triangle. This one I did really enjoy. I enjoyed this one a lot. Ice Like Fire was great too but then Frost Like Night wasn't my favourite. So but yeah, overall I really enjoy the series altogether, and I don't know if I'm going to continue rereading the rest of the books. I don't know if they're unscribed. If they are, then I might reread the other two books at some point, but at the moment, not high on my priority list. Next, I listened to a really weird middle grade book, uh, well, yeah, middle grade audio book called Big on the Raggedy Witches by Sealine Kiernan? Kiernan, I don't know. Um, this one, like I said, was really weird. Um, I'm not sure how to describe it. I've tried to describe this twice now and I just, <laughs> there's no real way to describe this book. It's relatively short so describing anything detailed would give away the plot. But I know a lot, a lot of people really love this book. Well not really, maybe not really love it but enjoyed it. I've heard some good things about it but I was just confused. And it was one of those middle grades that I just can't get into that it's just like stupid humour and things that is absolutely ridiculous. So it was on the same verge of um, the Wizards of Once or what? No, Wizards of Something. The one that's by Chrisetta, 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 I don't know what her name is, Chrisetta Cowell, the same author as um, How to Train Your Dragon. It's just like that stupid humour that's meant to amuse middle graders but I'm just way beyond that. Um, I like some middle grade which is fun, adventure, action-packed, awesome world, and that's the type of middle grade I like. Like Mr. Lemoncello's library series and the Menagerie series, but this one is just no. I was so confused. She goes to try and rescue her father 
and they go in through this lake and then her brother turns into a dog. I, sh I don't know. <laughs> I just can't explain this book and it's just weird. I did not enjoy it. I rated it like three, maybe 2.5 stars. The next two books I'm going to talk about are two Agatha Christie books. The first one is Endless Night, which is one of her standalone series, uh, standalone series, <laughs> standalone books. This one I did not like. This has been the only Agatha Christie book so far that I have not liked at all. This one basically reads the first 80% of the book is a romance. That's it. It's a romance. The last 20% you turn into a murder mystery. The last chapter is like verging on a psychological thriller. Well, not maybe thriller, but psychological something. So basically, I will be sharing spoilers for this book. If you don't want to know spoilers for Endless Night by Agatha Christie, when the book cover disappears, you can come back. So this one, the first 80% of the book is this guy meets the girl, they fall in love, they fall in love, haha. <laughs> they fall in love, they get married, they build a house, they move into the house, the house is haunted. Well, sorry, the land is haunted. It used to be run by gypsies and the land is haunted. And people throw rocks through their windows and shit because it's haunted. Um, then we come to the last 20% of the book. Um, he goes into town, she goes out riding, she doesn't turn up in town, and they find her dead. Okay, we got a murder mystery. It's only the last 20% of the book, but we've got a murder mystery. And then... We go through the investigation, they can't figure out who murdered her, they think it was this crazy gypsy woman who was trying to get the land back. Wasn't. Um, and then right at the end, the narrator, who we're following the main guy, he's the narrator of the book, and he divulges that now that his wife has been buried back in the US, he's going to move back to the UK, marry his wife's servant, not servant, but maid. Um, he's going to marry her because they work well together. And then he gets back to the UK and him and the maid start talking and it turns out he was the one, well sorry, she was the one, well it wasn't, I don't know if it was him or her, but someone poisoned the wife and that's how she died. Um, but yeah, he was basically the murderer of his wife and it was because she was a millionaire and he married her to get the money and then he killed her and then went with the maid. Which, okay, that's the plot of a lot of murder mysteries, because people want money, I get it. But then, but then, he murders the maid. He strangles her. And you're, like, getting details of this directly, like, while it's happening from the narrator, what a detail of how he's, I don't know, I think he strangles her, that or he beats her up, I don't know. But he, like, you're getting detailed explanation of him killing her. Which I feel bad for the um, narrator of the audiobook because that was weird. It just, it was weird. That's when it turned like psychological thriller. But either way, I didn't enjoy this book. Mainly because, like, if the murder had been towards the start and then there's like an investigation and then we slowly learn that he was actually the one that murdered her, then yeah, that would have been great. But because the first 80% of the book is just like a romance between him and her and the being all cutesy and then they b build this house together and I don't care at all like I'm not a romance reader I didn't know that Agatha Christie wrote romances and yeah that's that's the extent of that book and I didn't like it at all I think I'd rate it probably one two stars so the next Agatha Christie book I read was The Mysterious Affair at Styles. This one very much is Agatha Christie to me. This book is the first book in the Hercule Poirot series. And this one you kind of start out following Hastings. And if you don't know, Hastings is like Poirot's like sidekick in the future novels. And basically you start out, Hastings is the narrator of the story, and you start out with him and there's a murder. And then he brings Poirot in and they solve the murder. I'm about to read the second book in the Hercule Pro series, um, The Murder at the Links, which is a golf murder. And I'm about to read that one, so it'll be interesting to see if Hastings narrates this one. I really enjoy The Mysterious Affair at Styles. I really enjoy Her Hercule Poirot. He is like one of my favourite like detective type people. So I really enjoyed that book. Endless Night, not so fucking much. Hey guys, so I just had to go and do um, a session with a client, so I'm back 
I've put a jumper on because it's fucking cold and I just need to do this really quickly because my battery is about to go dead. So um, the next book was Rise of Fire by Sophie Jordan. This one is a Rapunzel retelling and basically they're living in the tower, these people come and they meet them, she saves them from the beasts that are out in the world because <clears throat> in this world um, there's only one hour of daylight throughout the entirety of the day, the rest of the time it's night and these creatures come out at night and try and kill people and yeah so she saves them from one of those creatures and then these other people come and they're looking for her as she's the lost princess and they go she goes off with one of the people that she saved and goes off on an adventure there so it's basically what that follows and then the sequel just follows off of that the last book I read was Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. This one is the sequel to um, Daughter of the Pirate King, which I'm pretty sure it's a duology. I don't think there's any more books. But um, this one is basically about this girl whose father is like the king of pirates and she has her own ship and a, basically a full crew of females. Like there's, there's a couple males in there, but it's mostly females. And she goes off on adventures and then in this one she tries to find her mother. That's basically about it. They're really good books. I really enjoyed them and I was walking with my dog when I was listening to the end of Daughter of the Siren Queen and I nearly started crying. It was so damn good but um, very heartbreaking as well because there's a lot of people that like die or nearly die and yet yeah it's a, it's a little hectic. But yeah, that's it for my May wrap up. Give this video a like and a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.